Good afternoon. Thank you. Um, great to be here. Thank you for the invitation to present. Um, it's great to be back in, in DC. I'm based in Los Angeles. I work at Technicolor. When we think about immersive media, we think about four themes. We think about disruptive. We think about episodic. We think about social. And we think about high end. So I'll walk through those and unpack them a little bit. So for, for disruptive, everything we've done to date for content creation, content production, content distribution and delivery is going to change. Immersive content is going to change, we believe, most if not all of how we do things today. Episodic. While we make movies for Disney and Fox and, and pretty much every studio, we're not, we're not sure, we, don't know, we know that we believe that VR is a, is a medium for watching a two-hour movie. We think that we're going to see things like episodic content, short-form content, installment content coming along that will be intense and highly interactive, but it won't be two hours in length. Social. So it's hard to imagine today when you look at a VR headset that that's a tremendously social experience. That feels solitary and a little closed off. But we believe this is going to change. We believe that content that's social, that engages the user and their family and friends, and all their friends online or physically present, is a game changer. And that's also going to require some changes in format and distribution, delivery, and creation. And last is high end. That's really more for Technicolor. You know, we pride ourselves on bringing premium high end experiences to light and to, to, to life. Uh, we believe there's a huge ecosystem for Snapchat AR and for 360 degree camera capture VR. But it's probably not where we will play. We will continue to play to our strength, which is light and color and interactivity. So Kim mentioned game engines. Why are we slightly obsessed now with game engines? Well, it's because in the VR projects we've worked on, which have been about 50 or 55 to date, um, we've been increasingly using game engine. This is a technology that came from the games industry. It's not a technology that we, we would use typically in visual effects or video, but it's tremendously impactful for us in building VR experiences. And why is that? It's interactive. Everything that's immersive is by nature interactive. It's real time. It allows us to render a shot in real time and then change it in real time. And I'm going to give you a demo of that in a second. And lastly, it is high end. Now, you may be thinking Pac-Man or Candy Crush is a game engine. We've got something to show you that I think will change your mind. So let's look first at how we do things today. And, and Paul's actually touched on this. He's been great to show us a little bit of Jungle Book. This is a movie that we worked on. Um, it's really a, a love story. It's a love letter to India. This is Ruddy Kipling's book. It's a Disney movie. We're, pr we're very proud and humble to be working on it with Disney. It won an Academy Award this year for Best Visual Effects. The team in India that we used uh, as part of our moving picture company had 800 digital artists. And the first thing they did was go out and scout India. They went out and traveled 12,000 kilometers and went to 10 states in India and took 400,000 digital still images of leaves, of branches, of trees, of forest, of jungle, of mountains and rocks and rivers and animals, and brought it all back to Bangalore, where their team is based. And over the course of 18 months, we put together this movie, working with Disney and working with the director, John Favreau. Uh, and we're very proud of this movie, of course, but we're also thinking about how this translates into our immersive future. We don't have you know, the, the luxury of building a team of 800 people to go off and do this for 18 months in some of these shoots. And a lot of what they're doing is by nature high end. It's stunning visuals. This is real time light and color rendered. Obviously, the panther Bagheera is not there. Uh, Mowgli, the boy, is in the movie, Paul's right, about 40% of the time, it's actually a digital stand in. When you see the wee boy struggling for survival in the jungle and being chased by wolves, we didn't do that to this kid. We actually put a digital stunt double in there. And so you'll see in the movie, if you watch it, hard to see, but most of the time when he's running through the forest, when he's jumping through vines or off a cliff or into the water, we used a digital stunt double, which we created using photorealistic camera capture techniques. But that's super high end. It's by definition not interactive. 
and it's not in real time. So we are somewhat obsessed, as I said, about Game Engine and the potential for Game Engine to change the way we view reality. So I've used the term here, Reality Engine. It's a little hyperbolic, perhaps, for now, but I think it's coming. The cinematic narrative, as you know today, is changing. It has a fixed point of view. It's a 16 by 9 window into a two-dimensional universe, just across the screen. It's the same story arc every time, the same narrative. Whether you like the movie or not, you're stuck in it. It's a uniform experience for everyone in the audience. The audiences are observers. We are, in a movie, passive. We are unknown voyeurs to the characters and actors in the movie. But it has, as you've seen, very high-quality visuals. So let's contrast that with Game Engine, or gaming. Multiple perspectives. Not just each outcome can be different, each outcome will be different. You never play the same game the same way twice. Characters and scenery are fully interactive. The audiences are players. We bring our piece of story, or a multiplayer, stories and storytelling to the game. And just by being in the game, we change the outcome. Now, I talked about Candy Crush and Pac-Man. That's, you know, old school, perhaps. But what about the visuals? Games engines have come a long way. So what I'm about to show you is a demonstration and an ad that we put together working with Unreal Epic Engine. Um, this is an ad for Chevrolet. You're going to see a Camaro. Uh, I think it's, uh, correct me, guys, a ZL1? Yeah, ZL1 Camaro being chased around by a car that doesn't even exist yet. This was shot live in Angeles Crest National Forest, just outside of LA. The road is there. The scenery is there. There were no cars there. And then we took the scenery and the cars and put the whole thing into a game engine. So I'm going to show the demo, show the, the ad. It's a 90-second spot. And then we're going to do something really cool with it. So with that, take it away. Lewis, you've won so many times in your career. Monaco in 09, for example. How do you do it, man? Well, you know what? There's, there's always a way to win. There's always a way through. Lewis is going to be the first human ever to race a car operated by artificial intelligence. Let's meet the competition. Aja. Hello, gentlemen. In my simulations, I have beaten Lewis 148,623 times. <laughs> and how many real races have you won, Aja? This will be the first. Okay, so that's pretty cool. That's canned video. This is Wyatt from the mill. Hello. Hi, Wyatt. You Thank doing? you. So Wyatt and his team at the mill put this together. We're going to run this in a game engine. Okay, so what we're looking at here is a configurator that we had built for the original spot for the ZL1 Camaro. And part of the ask was be able to get in you know, the typical features that a, a dealership would want like you know, for Chevy to have so you can change your colors. What we did was running this off of a game engine, which this configurator right now is running live, we're able to now configure the colors of the cars determining on which color we want it to be. So if we're like any Bumblebee fans in the crowd, the car is yeah, now let's go yellow. Yeah, that's cool. All right. Cars, we have yellow, and then if we wanted to, we can add in a nice you know, black racing stripe across the top. What this is doing is this whole film, in a traditional sense, isn't being played the way you would normally play it. This is being run live, run off of a game engine itself. So it's running at, it's rendering each frame at 42 milliseconds, and it's rendering it real time. So this gives you the ability to go through 
and just randomly change your colors to be any color you want within the spectrum that they had designed with this car. This gives you an ability to have a piece of media that would be, you know, you'd have your original air body would run, but this gives it a life of, to live past that, where people can go in, configure the car that they want, and then actually run it in a film that they're actually, you know, it's, it's films that you can play. I bet we have some classic car fans in here, right? Well, muscle car? Yeah. Well, seeing that... Let's change it up a bit. Seeing that this was the 50th anniversary for the Chevy, they decided that, well, why not, since we can also do the, the ZL1, which is their newest car, they were also going to give you the ability to put in a 1968 Chevy Camaro. Again, this is running real time, so that car switched within the matter of me pressing that button, rendering live to the screen that you're seeing right there. So in a tradition, oh, sorry, go ahead. go ahead. No, go ahead. So, in speaking of time, how this how this is changing things with using real time game engines in the post production world, this is saving a, a tremendous amount of time. You're doing a lot of pre a lot of work in the front end where you're doing look development of the car to make sure that you have the body style and paint colors right, but then you have the ability to make quick changes at the end using all of the tools that we normally do. So while we were on set for this shoot, we were able to gather high dynamic range images of all of the environments. And this allowed us to then use those high dynamic range images to actually put the real time reflections that you're seeing. So for each scene that you see of this car, the lighting is being physically driven and it's correct to that location where we had taken the data. Normally this would take, you know, hours of time in pre-rendering it, running it through compositing. This is all being done in engine right now. Your composite, all the match light color and the coloring is all being done within engine. And, and there are 316 or so permutations of color and car and texture right. and options. So if you take the, the thousand hours or so of compute time that right. we require for that, then times that by 300, you can see why doing it in 43 milliseconds live is really cool. And we're really stoked about this. Right. It's just that the, when, when they originally, usually when we do car configures, you have to take the car, you get all the variables, you get all the colors, you have to pre render all those out. All that has to be taken, has to be sent off, composited, put back in, and rebuilt. Now that we've built the car in real time, we're able to do that at, you know, with literally the push of a button. So we're able to run through all the colors. So this gives you an ability. So we can also add a little bit of a sunroof if we wanted to. It gives you the ability to make changes on the fly that you normally would never have, but it also gives life to you know, a standard piece of traditional film, you're now able to change it at any time you want. So we use this to put together a pretty cool car configurator, but the applications for all kinds of things, movies, yeah. TV, games, huge, at, right? at the mill, we're, we're really looking forward to the next two to five years when the real-time engines and the GPU processors are up to the ability to actually start doing this for the wide scope of everything, not just cars. Hard, hard surfaces are pretty easy to do right now. Organics, people, characters, even uh, equipment. Like when you go on set, you'll be able to now have a visualization of what you're trying to shoot instead of the traditional tennis ball or a marker. Our idea is to actually have a, a physical representation that you can see through a viewfinder so you can actually frame up light correctly right on stage using real-time game engines. And that's why we're excited about game engines. So it's fantastic. Absolutely. Great. So, but yeah, that's it. So, <laughs> Thanks, Wyatt. Thank you very much, Tim. Good seeing you. Cool. All right. So that was very cool. I, I'm going to talk about sports. I, I'm completely out of time, so I'm going to jump through that. Um, I'm more of a kind of a, a rugby cricket fan anyway, so this may not apply. But we're looking at the Intel Sports 360 replay. Um, this is something that Intel was showing a lot at March Madness and Super Bowl. Uh, it's a really a, it's 36 5K cameras in an array around a playing field uh, or pitch or court. Uh, and it captures all the motion, all the movement, players, balls, etc., that are playing in the game. Now, it's a huge amount of data. 30 seconds of this is one terabyte. So when you, and it's a huge amount of compute, so much you really can't do this yet in real time. Um, but it's very impressive as a replay. So you would have seen it a few seconds, captured you know, a shot, uh, a good play captured, and then replayed uh, at the halftime break. We think we can help uh, together, I think, you know, the industry, this technology get to the next level. Um, when you get close up, for instance, Every point on this point cloud becomes a piece of data that's visible. And you really get this kind of green halo ghost image if you get too close to the action. Now, obviously, what we've been talking about is real time and real time graphic overlays. So we could take that point cloud. I'm not sure we'd put Arnold Schwarzenegger on top of it, but we did use Arnold Schwarzenegger when we 
did t Terminator Genesis, and we recreated Arnie as a Terminator 30 years after he shot the movie uh, and did the whole thing in wireframe. Um, so we could create a digital, digital Arnie. We could also create a digital LeBron uh, using the point cloud as a frame of reference for a real-time graphic overlay using some of the technology that we've just been de demonstrating in Game Engine. For sports, it's pretty impressive. Um, it would enable us to do a, a number of different things. The viewer can go to any part of the game and pause it and watch from any different angle, zooming in or around it. Uh, there's already technology that we've been seeing. It was demonstrated at the Monaco F1 Grand Prix, Grand Prix and at the Long Beach Grand Prix um, to get into a car in VR and drive the circuit in VR using a game engine. Uh, Microsoft put out a, a teaser video that's um, excellent about sports and fantasy football and football and how you could watch that on your coffee table from a God's eye perspective. And lastly, um, really go crazy. Can we alter the game ourselves? Can we jump into the replay and execute that perfect shot the way it should have been done the first time? So um, I'm going to wrap. Uh, really appreciate the time, and thank you very much.